God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of the church. Let us open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you and we thank you for today, for this beautiful Sunday. We thank you for your word today. We pray your anointing on the service today. And we thank you, Father God, for all those that are here today and those that are viewing this video message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My beloved, please like us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, because you know, we endeavor to bring you the word of truth through the Holy Spirit. Follow us, and I know that God will richly bless you. Thank you very much in advance. My message title today is The Testimony. I will be reading from Acts chapter 7 and verse 58, which reads as follows. And cast him out of the city, and stone him, and the witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. That's from the King James Version. Now the English Standard Version renders it. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. My beloved, here in this verse is the biblical testimony concerning the death of the first Christian martyr, or the first Christian witness to die for Jesus Christ. And his name was Stephen. Stephen was chosen as one of the first seven church deacons, as listed in Acts chapter 6. The selected servants had to be of good reputation, full of the Spirit and of wisdom. Stephen was also full of grace and power and doing great wonders and signs among the people. Stephen is the first person after the apostles said to have performed wonders and signs. His power was not physical strength or worldly knowledge or influence, but the power of the Holy Spirit. Beloved, as Christian witnesses for Christ, we never know when or who will be affected by our witness of Christ. My illustration for this will be a man named Saul of Tarsus, who became a Christian many years later due to the testimony of Stephen, as Stephen was stoned in our verse today, verse 58. And the witnesses laid down their garments at Saul's feet. Our opening verse today, my beloved, will be Acts chapter 6 and verse 8 from the King James Version. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. My beloved, what talks about and Stephen, one of the new men chosen as a deacon were assistants to the twelve apostles. His fearlessness, his splendid oratory, his intense faith, the great wonders and signs done in the power of this faith threw into the shade of the apostles and their words and works because he was full of the power of the Holy Spirit. And this fullness accommodated what the apostles were preaching about. And that was Jesus Christ and him as Savior and Lord. Stephen soon became, in the eyes of the Jews, the foremost among the Nazarene heretics by his fearless denunciation of the emptiness of Judaism as practiced by 
Pharisees as well as Sadducees. They drew down on his head the bitter hatred of each of the powerful parties in the state. They came together in unity, which was something rare that the <coughs> Pharisees and the Sadducees would come together in one accord. But they did against the doctrine that Stephen was preaching. It says he was full of faith. The better reading here is full of grace. Not to be understood as favor with the people, but as favor with God. The effects of which grace were those divine powers which enabled him to work those signs and wonders. Know that we can only do what the Holy Spirit endows us to do. And he had power. That means he had strength, heroic fortitude, to do the things of Christ and to endure through all adversity. So he did great wonders and miracles among the people. It is better to refer to the special power by which Stephen worked these great wonders to the intentness of his faith rather than to the special grace which in common with the other six, he received by the impos imposition of the apostles' hands. They laid hands on the deacons, and they prayed with them, which was a sign of camaraderie and giving of power, the power that the apostles had. And this is the first instance given us of anyone that was not an apostle working signs and wonders. So let's see what happened to Stephen. Acts chapter 6 and verse 15 says, And all that sat at the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. See, there was a certain countenance that Stephen had. It was like the countenance that Moses had when he descended from the mount. It was shining. And they saw a difference in him. But they didn't like what they saw. They knew he was special, but they didn't like it because they thought that he was infringing on their belief and their practice of Judaism. We know that when we pray and we seek God and we walk in the Spirit and we are built up in the Spirit, there is a certain glow that we as Christians have. And we should all have it, my beloved. So know that when you study God's Word, you pray and fast, you will look different. You will act different. And you will promote the things of Christ and not the things of the world. Let's look at our main verse today. Acts chapter 7 and verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. So it talks about, and they cast him out of the city. You see, by the law of Moses, these executions were to take place outside of the camp, or outside of the city. And they stoned him. There were four different modes of death awarded by the court of justice. Stoning, burning, slaying with a sword, and strangulation. Of these, the first was deemed the most severe, and was the punishment of blasphemy. The way in which it was carried out was as follows. The culprit, or the person, was stripped of his clothes, ascended a scaffold that was erected outside the city, which was twice the height, and they pushed him down it, and they would fall to the ground head first. That's usually what happens when somebody throws you over a hill down into a pit. 
And if death resulted in that, there was no need for stoning. But Stephen didn't die with that fall. So what that encouraged the people to do was grab big stones, the biggest that they could find, and continue to throw them. Everybody picked up stones that were throwing them and hitting Stephen. So what happened? They cracked his skull, smashed his body, and, of course, he died. And you can read about this type of stoning in Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 7. So it says that there was a man whose game was Saul there. This is the first time the famous Paul of Tarsus appears mixed up with the affairs of the church of Jesus Christ. It was as the bitterest enemy of the new sect we hear from him. Therefore, this conduct in the martyrdom of Stephen was noted. See, Paul went around rounding up Christians, and you know the whole story about what happened on the road to Damascus and his conversion. Well, he was going out rounding up these Christians because he thought that they were blaspheming against God because of the preaching of Jesus Christ. In our passage today, he was noted as a young man. This, however, must be understood with some reservation. At this period, Paul was about 35 years old, and this age is quite in accordance with the common way of speaking of a young man. Back then, a man was called young till he reached the age of approximately 45 years old. Shortly after this time, we find the Sanhedrin employing Paul as their chief agent in the import of Christians, which means he went out and sought the Christians and brought them back or led them back to Jerusalem for persecution. So, as you know, as I say previously, that Paul was on his way to Damascus with letters when he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And you can read about Paul's conversion in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. So, as time went on in Paul's life, you can see where after he became a Christian, the tables were turned. And after that, they sought to kill Paul because he was preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. But you know, Paul stood firm. And you know, Paul really, I don't think he ever really got over that he was there witnessing the stoning of Stephen. But he didn't let it hinder his ministry for Jesus Christ. But he did so with more fervor and more intensity because he knew that it was important. And I believe that he always recalled the instance of when he held the clothes of those that stoned Stephen. And he had a determination to make up for what he did on that fateful day. So my beloved, let's go down to Acts chapter 22 and verse 20, which says, and this deals with the highlight of Paul's testimony and this message today. It reads from the King James Version, And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting into his death, and kept the remnant or the clothing or the cloaks of them that slew him. So here we're looking at the end of the book of Acts, and 
course, Paul's final years on the earth. And we can see that he still had that thought in his mind. And he carried it through his whole ministry until the end. And the only time he was set free from that thought was when he was beheaded by Nero in Rome. So my beloved, in closing, and I mean to say that a real convert still retains the remembrance of former sins, former deeds. For all his past deeds against the church, Paul alleged as reasons why he could not expect to be received by other Christians. But he thought that how could they accept him knowing that he was a persecutor. But we know that in Damascus, when he first stood with the Christians, they were assured that he was one of them, that he had been converted from Judaism to Christianity. And a lot of times it is hard for people to understand us when we receive salvation, when we turn from our wicked ways and start working for Jesus Christ. It is hard. But you know, Ananias, who laid hands on Paul and received his sight, stood with Paul. And he stood in agreement with Paul that Paul had been genuinely converted. To my beloved, Paul never forgot his approving the death of Stephen. But it did not hinder him from his future labor for Jesus Christ. Because as you know, Paul labored more than anyone of the apostles. So my beloved, realize your sinful past and repent and move on. Don't live in the past because the past is gone. But look forward, move forward to the great things that God has set before you. Don't allow your past to bog you down. Don't allow your past on what you had been bog you down. But look to Jesus Christ and be a willing vessel for him to use. My beloved, you will have more peace knowing that you are doing something for the praise and glory of God through Jesus Christ. Because you can never make up for the past. It's done. It's in eternity past. But you can have an effect on the now time and in the future. Remember that when you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, the old is past and all things become new. That's going to be the conclusion of our message this Sunday titled The Testimony, which is the testimony of Stephen, which led to the testimony of Paul. My beloved, and what a testimony it was. For we, we never know what our testimony is going to do or how it is going to affect others. So always have a good testimony for Jesus Christ. Right now, I would like to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If you would like to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, you must repent of your sins. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the only one to heaven. You must believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, was now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to believe that today, please, won't you pray this prayer with me? Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, the testimony from Acts chapter 7 and verse 58. I am a sinner. I have committed sins against you. But now I want to change my ways. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. I am sorry for my sinfulness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the only way to heaven. 
that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I confess this today. And I believe that through my repentance, my belief in Jesus Christ, as my Savior and Lord, that I have become a Christian. And now, should I leave this life at any time, I will go to be with him forever in heaven. And I thank you for saving me today, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer and truly meant it from your heart, I'm going to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I would like you to do is just raise your hands and thank God for your salvation. Then what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church when that preaches from the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, omitting nothing. I'd like you to get an audience with the pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, and to baptize you by immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you and to give you a Bible if you have one. Then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net or through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or our other website at www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest. We are on a lot of social media websites. But if you have a hard time finding us, just Google us. Abundant Grace Church of Midlothian, Texas, or Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today. Please continue to follow us. We praise God for you. And keep in touch with us. We desire to hear from all those that view our videos or listen to our audios. God bless you. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of the church. Go in peace, my beloved.